What's up, everybody? So with 8th edition out for 40k, we have now, as the game to play, the main rules and the indexes, no codex as of yet, which I knew going in, which I'm sure everybody knew or should have known going in, and it's not a problem, it's not the subject of this ramble. I'm okay with the indexes being a band-aid, and that's what they are, that's what they will be, and that's fine. Instead, I want to go ahead and ramble about models, specifically kits. GW has a nice capability now, something kind of unique, even amongst past edition changes, where there are no codices to speak of, meaning every faction that has a codex will be getting one in time. Which means when a codex comes out, we tend to see new units or new models come out, as well as model updating. And I think this is a prime position for updating the range that already exists for 40k from GW. And that's what I want to ramble about. My picks and what I think needs to be updated. Uh, stuff that really should have been updated a while ago is all of it. <laughs> but uh, this is a prime opportunity to do some updating. And I hope some of these, particularly the first one I'm going to mention, gets updated. So, with that said, share your thoughts in the comment section below. My first pick is the Adepta Sororitas, the Battle Sisters. They're listed as Adeptus Ministorum as far as armies go, which is fine. Um, their entire range. I'm not picking one. Their entire range needs updating. They're passable now because they're pewter. And back in the day, pewter was the way to get extra detail on models. So their detailing is passable now. But they need updating to full-on plastic range. Give the fan base what they've wanted for years. Give this faction uh, a booster shot in potential popularity with plastic range. The Sisters of Silence, which have no relation, have shown how cool something like this could be. They look nowhere near the same necessarily, but the concept, you can kind of look at it and then, you know, change it in your mind. And you can have some really cool looking Sisters of Battle. Just update the range. You don't have to change their look 100%, keep how they look on the pewter side, you know, but make them multi-part plastic kits. Give the players options and bits. Extra hat options and or an extra leg option or whatever the case may be, like you do with Space Marines. I think this force could definitely attract players. It doesn't right now attract any except those who really want to get involved with them, regardless of how limited they are model-wise, because of their range limitations. But make them plastic. The Pandit Engine, plastic. It'll build so much better that way. The Exorcist Tank, plastic. I've seen people build it. It's quite the trial. And um, to be plastic, uh, plastic pewter, I should say, hybrid. That shouldn't be anymore. They are a glimpse into the days of old of, of collecting a 40k army. And while that's neat, they should be updated. They've been long, long overdue. So that rant is done. Moving on, I want to go ahead and talk about Space Marines. Space Marines get a lot of stuff, no doubt. We see that with Primaris. We've seen that over the over the years. But still, their range has kits that should be updated. And just a quick pause. I'm specifically focusing on squad-based kits. I might do some rambles for uh, single-model character-based things in the future because there are some that can be standing to be updated as well. But anyways, back into the swing of things. Space Marines, particularly their their regular universal terminator and assault terminator kits these kits have been around a while they look fine but they could stand to be updated in particular because of the blood angel terminator assault kit the wolf guard terminator kit and the deathwing terminator kit these are of the same mark of terminator armor granted more specific chapter details on them but if you just forget about the chapter specific detail and just focus on it as detail and ornateness befitting a Terminator uh, armor, you can see what could be done for your basic universal range Terminator and assault Terminator kits. Tartaros and Cataphracty plastic kits from GW also show this. They're different marks, so they don't look the same, so it's kind of a, uh, a little bit of a different comparison, but it's more showing the, the detail capabilities, the, uh, the crispness of the detail and posing and whatnot, and how that can definitely be, stand to be updated for the basic Terminator and Assault Terminator kits. Another really good example of this is in the 
um, Space Marine Terminator Command Squad box. This has five range Terminators from the regular Terminator kit and the plastic Terminator Captain. Now, forgetting the fact that the blue is painted differently from the two, look at the detail. Now, yes, it's a Captain that's more ornate and what have you, but still, the detail, the posing, the capability of it is all shown here as a nice little comparison between that one Terminator Captain and those five range Terminators. They just, I think, really need to be updated. And I love Terminator, so maybe that's why. But I just think, you know, update the range. It, they've been out for years. And as long as they've been out, Tactical Squad has been updated. Assault Marine Squad has been updated. The Devastator Squad has been updated twice. Even the Stern Guard and the Vanguard went from being pewter to being really cool plastic kits. It's about time Terminator's got the same uh, treatment, I feel for the basic Terminator kit. And you can keep it universal. In fact, as a Deathwing player, I would love to see a really nicely updated Terminator and Assault Terminator kit. I love the Deathwing kit, but it would be really cool to to, uh, to do some bit customization and take from the basic kit and add Deathwing stuff to it. But there's no reason to even look at it for me now because the Deathwing kit just has what I need in spades and the regular Terminator kit just isn't worth investing in to collect Deathwing, just as a aside. But uh, they probably won't combine the two kits. If they did, they could make the right arm for the Storm Bolter and the Thunder Hammer and at the wrist, and then they have a bunch of hand bits for Storm Bolters, Thunder Hammers, maybe a combi weapon, and so forth. I really do think that this is the time and the opportunity to do so for these kits. They've been around for years, for many editions. Let's update them. Let's make their power fist and their chain fist look cooler. Let's make their leg stances a bit better. Let's add some bits, especially if they end certain arms at the wrist. You can add some bits that are more for an HQ option. Maybe use the kit as a way to also let you build a really cool Terminator Captain. Who knows? Anyways, I've uh, ranted long enough on the Terminators. Clearly, I'm a fan of Terminators. From there, let's talk Chaos. Now, Chaos has a lot of opportunities for updating and advancement of their kits too but in particular i want to look at havocs havocs never really had a kit they used to be pewter blisters now they're resin uh kind of a blister pack of five you get a squad leader and then you get one of each heavy weapon auto cannon heavy bolter last cannon missile launcher that is really lackluster <laughs> and uh obviously no posing capability or anything like that the squad leader is kind of eh looking so I think a kit is in order. Something akin to the Devastator kit would work for the Havocs. Uh, they're a nice fire support, heavy firepower squad. I like Havocs. And I think they need more uh, stuff going on for them. Maybe even, uh, you know, adding in that squad box some stuff that looks really Iron Warrior-esque, considering that's kind of where they came from, uh, could really go a long way. Just a kit, a nice multi-part plastic kit with weapon options, bit potentials, posability. Even if you don't want to build Havocs, you can buy that for some cool bits and, and, and kit bash whole squads together for the Chaos range. It's just something that I'm surprised hasn't happened yet for a squad that definitely deserves it. So I think the Chaos range could definitely stand to get their Havocs updated. There's other stuff in the Chaos range, I'm sure. But for me, it's always been about the Havocs. Like, why is this not made into a kit is what I've always thought every time the Codex came out. I'm like, all right, Plastic Havocs. Nope. Okay, weird. Um, at least I haven't seen it. And when you do a product search, you only find the one Havocs thing. So I really don't think there is. You kind of have to go with the Chaos Space Marine Squad and maybe then buy, and then buy these Havocs and kind of adorn it that way and do the best you can. So... A kit would definitely be cool. And lastly, I want to talk Necrons. It's going to be particularly the Necron Warriors, although this could be applied to the Death Marks and the Immortal, although it's a little bit more difficult for the Immortal specifically because of the power cabling from the spine to the weapon. But the Necron Warrior squad kit box thing needs updating. Keep the Scarab stuff in there. Keep the green rod for the weapon. That's iconic. But update the Necrons themselves. They don't need more detail. In fact, I like the way they look. But the leg posing is 
between like two, maybe three different leg poses, and that's it. The uh, posing of the arms when they go together is like maybe three different poses, and that's it. None of which really works well to represent them firing their gun necessarily without doing some tweaking and trying to make it work by forcing it to be a pose a bit differently, which is a little bit hard to do because the left hand is part of the weapon bit. So the way this works is the right arm and weapon are one piece, I believe, and part of that weapon is the left hand. So the left arm ends at the wrist, and you got to link it up and have it look like it fits and makes sense, therefore limiting your posing. Um, the Immortal limits their posing that way also. The Death Mark, same deal. And I think some Skatari do that too, just as a random side note. But anyway, I really think it's a shame. And I feel like it's a leftover from the old way of doing kits. If you make the left hand separate from the weapon, basically making the left arm one piece with the hand, you have now opened up posing capability. You can have the Necron Warrior wielding their Goss Flayer one-handed. Their robotic bodied Xeno species. Why not? You can have a uh, pose like they're firing it. You can have it raised above their head like they're about to strike it down on an enemy in melee this way a lot easier too. Can you pose them differently than how they're intended? Yes, but it's more work, a little bit of potential uh, model surgery required. And it shouldn't be that way just to get some posing that would be making sense. Obviously you want to go crazy, yeah, you're going to have to do some model surgery for any kit. But there's no walking leg bit. They're all basically varying degrees of wide stance. And while I get it, they're phalanxes of warriors in this undead robotic Xenos legionary style of force. But they look like they're just standing around not knowing what they're doing or waiting for orders. The squad. That's how the entire squad looks to me. And I don't think there's anything against them being more animated in terms of looking like they're walking or you know having some walking, some standing, like the squad is advancing forward and firing. Some actually look like they're shooting their gun. Things like that, I think, could go a long way. And uh, would really love to see that for the, the warrior. The immortal, like I said, is a bit more difficult because there's a power cable going from their spine to their weapon. So that really just limits your posability. They also have their left hand attached to the weapon. But being like a heavy style weapon looking thing, it kind of makes sense in a way. So maybe just updating them to have a bit more innate posing capability in the kit. You know, keep the cabling so you have to put things together in a very specific way, but have it so, oh, look, it's holding it forward and shooting it. Or a little bit of a difference going on would be nice. And the Death Marks uh, ranged weapon looks really mundane. It doesn't look necron -y enough. I think it needs to be more necron -y. But to just pick the Necron Warrior kit, if the Necron Warrior kit was updated with some different leg bits, the capability to pose the weapon to a greater degree, keeping that left hand separate from the weapon, making the left arm and hand one piece, I think really could go a long way. Because even... With the left arm and hand being one piece, they could still be holding the Gauss Flare, but they're all holding it at the exact same spot, which I get it, but at the same time, if they were separate, you could have the gun pose in a way where they'd be holding it in different spots. And it just adds a bit more of a narrative to the Force. It, it feels more organic. I know it's a weird term to use for a bunch of robotic stuff, but what I mean is it would feel more like it's uh, fluid, like this is a, a snapshot in time of them marching across or firing in the battlefield and less a snapshot of them standing around in the tomb wondering what they're doing. So anyways, that's my pick for the Necrons, the Necron Warrior kit. I do like that green rod. In fact, I wish the Immortals kept the green rod for their Gauss weaponry too. Uh, I feel it's an iconic thing and I don't want it to go away. So if they do update the Necron Warrior kit ever, keep the green tube rod thing as part of their gauze weapon it's just to me iconic so anyways uh with that said that's basically it thanks for sticking through it what are your picks do you agree disagree and why and if you have any question comments or requests leave them in the comment section and until next time take it easy